Grab her, Pam. Hang on to her. Let me go! Oh, I got her, but somebody help me! Mr. and Mrs. North. Starring Richard Denning and Barbara Britton. Listen as Pam and Jerry solve the mystery, Death is Forever. The skies are low and sullen, spilling a stinging icy rain on the city. On days like this, evening arrives in the afternoon. And New York, a city of many moods, is in one of its worst. And somehow it doesn't seem right that a day like this should be anyone's last in the city. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Grant. Globe Airways? Yes. Oh, I see. Yes. Well, thank you for calling. Dr. Thorne speaking. Oh, Dave, this is Tom. Oh, Tom, my boy. Where are you calling from? Uh, my apartment. Is Susan there? Left just a few minutes ago. Are you all packed? Yeah, but I just had a call from the airline. My flight may be delayed a few hours. Well, we won't complain about that. Give us more time for a going away party. Oh, by the way, I let Susan take my car so you won't have to worry about a taxi. Oh, thanks. But don't you two get so wrapped up in saying goodbye that you forget about your date with Wilma and me. <laughs> don't worry, we won't. Uh, someone at the door, Dave. I'll see you later. The Colonial Club at 7. Right. Tom? Wilma. May I come in? Well, yeah, of course. Thank you. What are you doing out on a day like this? I stopped by to give you my going away present. Aren't you having dinner with Susan, Dave, and me at the Colonial Club? Oh, yes. And I'll have a present for you there, too. Something less personal. Here, Tom. What is... Oh, I thought that since you're leaving, the building management would want you to return all the keys to your apartment. May I have a drink? Help yourself. Thank you. Won't you join me? No, thanks. I'm surprised you're not taking Susan to England with you, Tom. I thought you'd be married and... Susan's mother is ill. She doesn't want to leave her. It's too bad. At the moment. She'll join you later? That's the plan. I see. I was going to keep that key, Tom. I thought about it a lot. About how I was going to keep it and what I was going to do with it. Do with it? I was going to give it to Susan. Oh? As a wedding present. Now, see here, Wilma. I can just see her reaction, can't you? You know how she feels about David. He's been almost a father to her. And then for her to find out that David's wife and the man she's just married had had a cheap little affair. You ever did anything like that, Wilma? I'd... What? Kill me? Yes. That would be extremely kind compared to what you did do. Oh, stop it, Wilma, stop! Stop what? Loving you? I have, Tom. I've thought about that lately, too. At night, lying in bed in the dark. When a woman gets my age, she does a lot of that. Lying awake and thinking about how old she feels. She hates everything that makes her feel that way. The wrinkles, the gray hair, the oh, men. Oh, Wilma, will you? Especially the men. You made me feel old, Tom. Get out of here, Wilma. All in one day, in just a few minutes. Get out. You turned me into an old Are woman. Are you going to get out of and here? I decided or do... I'm going to kill you for doing that to me. Wilma. I Hate you. Wilma, don't be a fool. I hate you. Put down... Ah! Wilma! Yeah. I hate you. No, no thanks, Walter. Uh, you're keeping an eye out for Mrs. North. Huh? Yes, sir. Well, I'll wait until she comes. Jerry. Hmm? Jerry North. Well, for... 
Dr. Thorne. I can't believe my eyes. Where the devil have you been hiding? <laughs> right here in New York. Well, so have I. Gave up my practice in Chicago and moved here right after the war. Oh, I wish I'd known. Here, here, sit down. No, no, I can't, my boy. I'm meeting my wife and some friends. A young doctor friend of mine is leaving for England tonight. So we're... Oh, oh, Pam. Jerry, darling, I'm sorry I'm late, but I had an awful time getting a taxi. <laughs> uh, Pam, dear, this is Dr. Thorne. How do you do, Doctor? Well, this is a pleasure, Mrs. Thorne. Dr. Thorne? Wait, I remember. Oh, you're the doctor who took care of Jerry in the Navy Hospital in Honolulu. That's right. Of course. Oh, Jerry wrote me so much about you at the time. Uh, that I... Excuse me. Uh, yes, Walter? A telephone call for Dr. Thorne. Oh, for me? You can take it right over here, sir. Oh, oh excuse me. Yes, sir. Of course. This way, Doctor. In the booth, sir. Oh, thank you. Hello? Dr. Thorne. That's Susan. Oh, thank heavens I was able to reach you. Susan, what is it? It's Tom. He's been hurt. What? He's been shot. Someone tried to kill him. Well, where are you calling from? The West Side Emergency Hospital. I found him in his apartment unconscious. I called an ambulance. I'll get there as quickly as I can, Susan. Oh, hurry, doctor, please. Yes, Susan, yes. Dr. Thorne told us what had happened and that he didn't have his car. We offered to drive him here to the hospital, Bill. I see. Dr. Now, Ryan. how long has Thorne been in there with Dr. Grant? Well, he arrived about a half hour before you did. Have you talked to Grant's girlfriend yet? Susan Wells? No, no. I haven't talked to anyone yet except you two. And after she telephoned Thorne, Miss Wells collapsed, was given a sedative and taken home. Oh, here's Dr. Thorne now. Oh. Oh, uh, Dr. Thorne, I'm Lieutenant Wigan Homicide. How's Dr. Grant? Well, this isn't the case for your department yet, Lieutenant, but his condition is very critical. I'm having him prepared for immediate surgery. What are his chances? Very slight, I'm afraid. Has he regained consciousness at all? No. I see. Well, I won't bother Dr. you with any more Ryan. questions now, Doctor, Thanks, but if Dr. you... Oh, Ryan. Wilma, you got my message? Yes. How is Tom? Not good. Uh, Lieutenant, this is my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Thorne? And this is Mr. and Mrs. North, Wilma. How do you How do? do? I'm, uh, I'm going to Grant's apartment, Dr. Doctor. Ryan. I'll leave a man here at the hospital, but I'd appreciate it if you'd Dr. get in touch with Ryan. me if there's any change in Grant's condition. No, I will, Lieutenant. Pam and I'll walk out with you, Bill. Right. Good night, Doctor. Uh, good night, Jerry. Mrs. North. Good night, good night, Mrs. Thorne. Good night. I have to get back to Tom, Wilma. Why don't you David. just... David. Yes? Is... Is Tom going to live? I don't know. Well, what do you think? What are his chances? You must have some idea. All I can tell you is that I'll do my best to save him. And now I really must... David. Well? Tom... Tom can't live. Well, he can if I am... That isn't what I mean. I mean he mustn't live. What? If he does, I'll go to prison. You? I'm... I'm the one who shot him, David. Wilma, well, what happened? Why... Never did... mind. I shot him, and if he lives... He'll go to the police. Are you suggesting that I'm I... I'm telling you that Tom must never regain consciousness. You have to operate, I know that. But you have to make certain that he dies on the operating table. Well, You can't save him, David. Do you understand? You mustn't save him. For my sake, for my sake, you, you've got to let him die. <laughs> Let him die? Yes. Do you know what you're asking? Yes. You're out of your mind. David, listen to me. You must... Stop be. it. David! Stop! Now, what is all this? What happened? Why... Why would you want to kill Tom? I... Answer me. We were... We were in love. In love? At least I was with him. You and... And Tom. And I thought he loved me. I met him secretly for a few months at his apartment. But then, then he told me he didn't want to see me anymore, that he was in love with Susan, that he'd asked her to marry him. I tried to forget him, but I couldn't. David, please, just don't look at me like that. Try to understand. Understand? What he meant to me. What any young man would mean to a woman like like me. I didn't want to get old. You know that. I've told you. You laughed at me and thought I was just joking or being silly, but I wasn't. I meant it. And that's why when Tom started paying me some attention, I... Oh, David. You're a rotten little... No, David. Don't say that. I, I, I'll make it up to you. I was a fool. I know that. But Tom was as much to blame as I. And if he dies, no one will blame you. You could say you tried to save him. You operated. You tried. I <laughs> ought to. Dr. Thorne. Yes? We're ready for you. Coming. I'll answer it, dear. Hi, Jerry. Well, 
Uh, oh, Bill. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> Come on in. Thanks. It's Bill, Pam. Bill, what are you doing here? Well, Dr. Grant's apartment's only a few blocks from here, so I thought I'd drop by on my way back to the hospital. Any news about Grant's condition? Oh, no, not yet. Would you care for a cup of coffee, Bill? Oh, no, thanks, Pam. I have to run along in a minute. But I just stopped by to see what you could tell me about Dr. Thorne and his wife. Mm, I'm afraid we can't tell you a thing, Bill. We met Mrs. Thorne just tonight. I know. But you knew the doctor in the Navy, didn't you, Jerry? Yeah, slightly. Just while I was in the hospital. Uh -huh. Well, how about Dr. Grant? Do you know him? No. Well, then I guess you can't tell me what I want to know. What's that, Bill? I found this in Grant's apartment. A note. Mm-hmm. Read it. Darling, I must see you tonight. W. W. Yeah. And Mrs. Thorne's first name is Wilma. Yeah. What are you thinking, Bill? The same thing you are, Pam, and I'd hoped you knew enough about the Thorns or Grant to tell me if I was right. I'm sorry, Bill. Of course, that W might not necessarily mean the note was written by Mrs. Thorne. Not necessarily, no, but I, I know this much. Grant was shot by a woman. A woman? And I know the time. 4.45. Grant's next-door neighbor heard Grant and a woman quarreling. Well, what about? Well, she couldn't make it out, but it was a woman, and it was an argument. And then the neighbor heard what she later realized must have been a revolver shot. And she's positive about the time. 4.45. I'll get it. All right. Hello? Yes, yes, he's here. Uh, it's for you, Bill. Oh, thanks, Jerry. Sergeant McCardle calling from the hospital. Right. Hello, McCardle. Hello, Lieutenant. Anything you on, Grant? Yeah, he's a homicide case now. He died on the operating table about 20 minutes ago. Yes? I didn't expect you home. And I didn't know whether I'd find you here, but I wanted to see you. Why? Tom's dead. I know. I called the hospital. I did everything I could to save him, Wilma. And not just because I'm a doctor, and that was my job. I wanted to save him for your sake. For my sake? Yes. I hoped I might at least keep you out of the electric chair. If you'd have, have wanted to help me, you'd have... You should have known that I wouldn't do what you asked. Yes, I suppose I should have. I was a fool, but I was afraid. I should have kept quiet and gambled on the possibility that Tom wouldn't flee. That wouldn't have been any better. You'd have gone through life tortured You're by... You're a doctor, David. Save lives, not so... Wilma, listen. I said things at the hospital I shouldn't have said. You were right about one thing. I should have understood about you and Tom. And I do. But you have only one chance now to save yourself from the electric chair. Give yourself up. Come with me right now to the police. No. I'll do everything I can to help you, Wilma. The forgiving husband standing by the wife who wronged him. Wilma, don't make me go to the police alone. You're not going to the police, alone or any other way. And I'll tell you why. Because Tom's dead, and I'll swear that you let him die on the operating No one's going protection. to believe that. And then you were afraid it might come out? An autopsy will prove I did all I could for Tom. <laughs> Perhaps it will. But you know how those things work, David. The jury might say you're not guilty, but there'll be people, a lot of people, who'll have questions in their minds, who'll always wonder if maybe, just maybe, the jury was wrong. And when that happens, your reputation as a doctor won't be worth a penny. Where are you going? To the police. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Thorne, this is Lieutenant Wigan. Is Dr. Thorne there? David? Why, no. Well, do you have any idea where he is? No. Is something wrong, Lieutenant? He called me and said he wanted to see me. Now, that was about two hours ago, and he hasn't shown up. Wigan speaking. Jerry, Bill. Uh, did Dr. Thorne get in touch with you? What? How'd you know he wanted to see me? Well, he called here. Said he was calling from home. And from he... home? Yeah. He said he Now, wanted... look, Jerry. You and Pam get down here to my office right away. Okay, Bill, but what's... Never he... mind what. Just get down here. <laughs> the 
Clark Arnold. Yeah, Lieutenant? I'm through fooling around on this Grant case. I want a bulletin put out on Dr. Thorne. Okay. And then you and Rollins go out and pick up Mrs. Thorne. I want to talk to her. And what time was it that Dr. Thorne called you, Jerry? Oh, about uh, 10 o'clock, I think, wasn't it, Pam? Yes. And you're sure he said he was telephoning from home? Well, that's what he said. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thorne, will you step in here, please? Sit down, please. Mrs. Thorne, your husband called Mr. North's apartment at 10 o'clock this evening, thinking that I might be there. And a few minutes later, he reached me at the West Side Hospital. Well? Now, Dr. Thorne didn't tell me where he was calling from, but he did tell Mr. North. And he said he was calling from home. Mr. Thorne, why didn't you tell me your husband had returned home after operating on Dr. Grant? I didn't know. Oh? I didn't get home tonight until 11.30. Where were you? After I left the hospital, I went for a drive. On a night like this? Yes. Mrs. Thorne, have you ever seen this before? Where did you get this? From Thomas Grant's apartment. Did you write that note? Well? Yes. And since you know this much, you might as well know the rest. Tom and I were in love. In love? And we were going away together. At least I was going to join Tom in England in a few weeks. After I spoke to my husband about a divorce. But uh, what about Susan Wells? Well, we understand she was engaged to Dr. Grant. And she was. But Tom was going to tell her that he couldn't marry her. He was going to see her this afternoon. What time this afternoon? Well, Tom said she was stopping by his place and that he'd telephone me after he talked to her. He said he'd call about five, so apparently he was going to see her just before then. And Dr. Grant was shot at 4.45. Yeah. McArdle. Yeah, Lieutenant? You've got the address of Susan Wells? Yeah. Go get her and bring her here. I've got some questions to ask that young lady. But, but this is fantastic. I, Tom and Wilma. I don't believe it. Then how do you explain a note Mrs. Thorne wrote him? I don't know. Pam, dear, let's let Bill handle this. Where is Wilma? In the next office, Miss Wells. Get her in here. Oh, now, look, Miss Wells. She's lying. I, why would she lie about a thing that... I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that, that Tom was in love with me. Miss Wells, you say you arrived at Dr. Grant's apartment at about 5 o'clock. Yes. You rang the doorbell, received no answer, and then tried the door and went in, finding Dr. Grant lying on the living room floor. Yes. Can you substantiate the fact that you didn't arrive at the apartment earlier than 5? Why should I have to? Because we know it was a woman who shot Dr. Grant. A woman? With whom he quarreled. And we know that Grant was shot at 4.45. And you think that I... I think it's possible that you were the woman in Grant's apartment. No! That Grant told you he was breaking his engagement to you, well, and true. in the heat of the argument, you shot him. I didn't! I didn't! <laughs> then where were you at 4.45, Miss Wells? I... I was on my way to Tom's apartment. I had Dr. Thornton's card. Wait. Wait, I can prove that I wasn't at Tom's at 445. Well, how, Miss Wells? Dr. Thorne can tell you. He knows that I didn't leave the office until 430. I couldn't have been at Tom's because it takes at least 20 minutes to drive from the office to his apartment. Ask Dr. Thorne. We will when we find him, but... Excuse me. Wagon speaking. Oh, yes, Harrison. What? Where? Yes, I see. Yes, all right. Well, what is it, Bill? Miss Wells, is there anyone else who knows that you didn't leave Dr. Thorne's office until after 4.30? No. Oh, it's too bad. But Dr. Thorne can tell you. No, he can't, Miss Wells. He's dead. Dead? He's been killed in an automobile accident. truck up ahead. Yeah. Oh, and there's Bill's car. I'd better pull up on the other side of the road. Pam, why don't you and Mrs. Thorne wait here in the car while I find out what's going on? Huh. May I come? Wait here, Mrs. Thorne. I'll be back in a minute. 
Bill. Jerry. Hey, what are you doing here? Well, after you left headquarters, uh, Mrs. Thorne insisted on coming out here, so we brought her. Hey, what happened to Thorne, Bill? Come over here. Take a look down there. Oh, right. It's a 150-foot drop to the bottom of that embankment. How did it happen? He must have lost control of his car coming down that hill, huh? And gone over the embankment, yeah. At least, that's what it was made to look like. What? This wasn't an accident, Jerry. It was murder. Murder? Thorne was dead before his car went off the road. Are you sure? The medical examiner's positive. Thorne was killed by a blow on the back of the head, the, the kind of wound that couldn't have come from his car going over the embankment. But who? Yeah, that's the next question. Who? It must have happened shortly after Thorne talked to me. Now, it took time to make certain of Thorne's identity because this is his wife's car. You see, it's registered in her name. Mm. His was found parked in front of Grant's apartment house. Susan Wells left it there. I see. Well, in that case, there must be some connection between... Wait a minute. What? Come on. Huh? Hey, where are you going, Jerry? Oh, over to my car. Why? What, what do you... You will find out. Come on, get in, Bill. All right. Bill! J- Jerry, what... Hold it, man. There's your murderer, Bill. Murderer? In the back seat with Pam. Oh, no. Wait a minute, Jerry. What are you, you can't... talking yes. about? Yes. The lie you told in Lieutenant Wigan's office, Mrs. Thorne. Lie? I don't know what you mean. You said you were out driving tonight, Mrs. Thorne, and didn't get home until 11.30, after your husband had left the house to go see Lieutenant Wigan. That's true. No, it isn't, Mrs. Thorne. Jerry, what is this all wait, about? Wait, wait, wait a minute. I see what you're getting at, Jerry. Well, I don't. Uh, I'm... Thorne couldn't have been in his wife's car if she hadn't seen him this evening. But what right. difference does it make? No. And you'd have no reason to say you hadn't seen him unless you'd killed him. Dr. Grant? Dr. Thorne. Oh. Why'd you do it, Mrs. Thorne? I didn't. I didn't do it. Watch it, Bill. Grab her, Pam. Grab her. Oh, Get her. Let go. Hang on to her, Pam. Let go. Let go. Wait a minute. I got her. I got her. Oh, now relax, Mrs. Thorne. Just relax. Uh, good work, Pam. Well, thanks, Bill. But, but will one of you please tell me what this is all about? Car and wrecked him? Yeah. Oh, how horrible. Yeah. Say, uh, by the way, darling, how are you feeling? Well, right now I'm beginning to feel the effects of my fight with Mrs. Thorne when she tried to get out of the car. Oh, and that reminds me, uh, will you pick up three steaks on your way home? Three steaks? Oh, is uh, someone coming to dinner? No. Well, then why three steaks? Well, I'm going to cook two and wear one. Pam and Jerry are sure to have more exciting adventures next week. Listen in, won't you? There's always mystery well sprinkled with humor on Mr. and Mrs. North. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.